Hey guys, it's Matt. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Supergirl Premium Format Statue from Sideshow Collectibles. This is the exclusive, so it has a few extra display options and some really neat features that set it apart from a lot of premium formats. Let's get into it. All right, as always, I like to talk about the art box that comes with these Sideshow Premium Formats. This one for Supergirl has a really nice pop art style that they've applied to a photo of the statue. It's a larger box than you would think for the size of the statue, but that's okay because it gives you a really nice presence in this artwork. On the front, you have this shot from slightly below the statue that gives you a sense of Supergirl flying up in the air. This heavily graphical motif continues all the way around the box onto the sides. And then on the back, we have the Supergirl logo. On the top, we have the Supergirl title, logo, and on the bottom, since these are number matched boxes, we actually have the number of the statue and the addition size. This is number 338 of 750. If you have room to display these art boxes, they're really cool. It's like getting an art print with your statue. Not every company does this, and I love that Sideshow does. All right, let's get started putting this Supergirl statue together. We're gonna to start with the base and let's look at the bottom of the base. It's got a very simple art layout on the bottom here with Supergirl's logo, the Sideshow logo at the top, and then you've got the hand numbered edition. This is again, number 338 of 750. You've got the title of the statue, which is Supergirl premium format figure. I do wish that the title said exclusive on here because it is separately numbered, which is 750. And these have a different edition size. It's a small little gripe. Then you've got your logos for DC, Supergirl, and all of the uh, copyright information right here at the bottom. The base is clouds, all spinning and twirling up into the sky as Supergirl flies through them. All right, next we're gonna add Supergirl's body. This is a really unique engineering solution they've used to make her look like she's flying. They've actually sculpted in a large portion of the cloud that's attached right to her cap here. This cloud piece is what has the very large peg and pin that goes into this really large key right here. If you're worried about any leaning issues, I don't think we're going to have them because this key and peg is so large in comparison to the rest of the statue. She slots right in here and we start to see that excellent illusion of flight that the statue displays. Now, since this is the exclusive version of this statue, you have a few options when it comes to the hands that you want to add to her. You've got two different fists, both a right and a left, and then you have this open hand with a dove flying off. I like the dove one, so let's start with that. So on her left hand, you've got the dove, and then on her right hand, we're going to have a fist. There's actually another little dove that flies off of the cloud right here, and that fits right here and keys in there with a magnet. Now that we've got the body and fists all put together, we have a couple options when it comes to the head. We've got the long-haired portrait, and we've got the short-haired portrait. I'm going to put it together with the long-haired portrait. I like the way that it lends to the softness of the look when she's got her dove. Now, she does come with a cloth posable cape. This cape is a little bit tricky in that you have to kind of hold it onto the head, the bust portrait, as you put it in. There's indentations, there's indentations right here on the bust. These are meant for the points of the cape. Carefully put those points in right here like this, and then slot that large key right into the bust. The cape will look like it's coming out of her costume, and it gives it a real integrated look. Now this cape is posable. It has wire all the way around it. Don't be too fearful when you're posing this cape. You're gonna to wanna to try a few things to get it to come up and look like it's flying in the wind. I always do this sort of waviness with that main large wire on the back, and then I curl up the edges a little bit. Gives you a sense that she's maybe come to the apex of her flight and the cape is following her up. You can add a lot of motion with posable capes and it's one of the reasons I'm a big fan of them. Now your other display options do include this other fist, and then you've got a little bit shorter chompy cut bust here. There's not much different in this portrait other than the haircut, but it does give it a very different look. She looks a little bit more powerful, but still beautiful and elegant. 
you leave the one dove here, but the other one flying off her hand, she doesn't have time for that. Now, this statue, one of the things I really, really like about it is this illusion of flight that they've given it. Uh, it's one of the few characters that they've done recently that has this fully flying look. There was an earlier Supergirl that had her sort of hovering straight up and up and down. Um, I feel like this statue makes her look like she's flying even more convincingly. And a lot of it has to do with the way that the cloud base and the figure itself are completely separate elements and they're tied together by this key right here. If you put this statue up on a high shelf, uh, the illusion of flight is very, very convincing. I really love that you have these two very different display options that change the statue up quite significantly. If you take off that fist and you put on this dove, and you take off this portrait, and you put on the softer long hair portrait. Again, anytime you do this, be very careful because the way this is done is a little bit finicky. But you get a character that's a bit softer, a bit more light. They've made her very, very pretty, but very young looking, which is, I think, right where she should be. She's not like quite 15 looking. She looks like she's 17, 18, 19, somewhere around there. Um, but I really like the design. The design of this statue uh, comes from Stanley Art Germ Lau. Um, he's a master of the female figure, and I think it shows really well. The sculpting of this character all the way around is very well executed. She's strong, yet elegant. The uh, skirt is sculpted, the cape is fabric. Um, one minor gripe I have is that the cape is a brighter red than the boots and the skirt. I know that that's intentional. I'm not really sure if I like it or not. I think it would have been interesting to have this cape be a darker red, so you'd get kind of that more cinematic color scheme that we see in the uh, Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman movies. But it does work well. It gives it some more contrast. It gives it some more uh, variance in the color design, the color palette. So I think it's okay overall. Her cape does have a silk screen S on the back, which is something I like. I, I like it anytime Superman has, uh, any of the super characters have that S on the back of their cloak. The paint and shading in her hair is wonderfully done. It's very natural. There's nice depth to it without the shading being too dark. So it just gives you a very realistic sense that this is her hair. She's got pink on her knuckles. Her nails are painted. Just sort of a soft flesh color that's darker than the rest of her hands. So she's not overdone at all. The magnets that hold her together are just the right amount of strength. It's just a very, very well done piece. It's one that I was really excited about when I saw it released. The portrait painting is very well done on these. She's got soft makeup, glossy lips. Her eyes are looking right the same direction. In this one, she's sort of looking at this dove, but can also be looking off into the distance. Because if you change the fist out to be this one, it wouldn't make sense if she were just looking at her fist. So she's kind of looking just off this way. Maybe she's looking right at where the dove is about to go, but it works really, really well in both configurations. The same can be said for this portrait. The fact that you get two beautiful portraits with these statues is just fantastic. There's only a few things I don't like about this statue, and they're very small gripes. But some of it come down to design. This statue is a fair bit smaller than other premium formats. It's because Supergirl herself is a smallish character, and then the base is sort of this round layout here. So that gives you a piece that's only about 21, 22 inches tall. It's okay in and of itself. If you have it in a lineup of other premium formats, it tends to look a little bit diminutive. She's just a small human figure and people are different sizes from one another. The solution to that that I have found is to put her up on a high shelf or on a riser. So if I were to have Superman here, he would actually be about this tall. So if you put her on a riser so that she's maybe even just a little bit taller than Superman, the effect is fantastic. And they really come together as companion pieces. I wouldn't call it a must have if you have a DC collection, but if you're a fan of Supergirl, if you watch the show, if you read any of her comics, if you just like the idea of a teenage super powered Kryptonian, then I think she's really great to have. She's a unique piece in the premium format lineup. Um, so it's really cool to add some variety to your collection. So jump on Sideshow, search for Supergirl Premium Format, and uh, pick the one you like. Happy collecting!
Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and